So one of the questions I've received about the Zettelkaster method is can it help you if you're studying? So it's been a while since I've been at university and college, so I haven't really seen it in action myself, but there's one thing that I do feel, and that's confident that if I were in a position to learn something new, whether that's in an educational setting or after, that I would absolutely use this method to do my studying. And the reason is, you, when you're studying, you're reading an awful lot of information. And it's really important to make sure that you can recall that information in your own understanding, not just recognize it if it's written in front of you um, or sort of have a pattern of you know, piecing things together because that's how it's visually laid out in the exercise book. Um, but really being able to you know, express it and teach it and come up with your own insights and ideas. But of course, when you're in the classroom, it's really hard to do like a full Zettelkaster note-taking method because information's flowing like straight at you and you're taking notes, you're trying to understand while taking notes and you know, make no mistake if you um, if you're a slow reader, if you're dyslexic, if you're you know, slow at writing, that is sort of a barrier to you know constraining your bandwidth of learning, which is quite frustrating. And then you have to put the extra time in to catch up in a way. So what would I do if I went back to the classroom and I wanted to really um, use this method in its full potential for studying? So there's a couple of things. One is that when you're in the classroom, you're gonna be taking fleeting notes. These are the quick notes. These are the highlights. Um, that you're getting from the lecture slides, that you're getting from the discussions, and uh, they may spark ideas, and more importantly, they may spark questions. One of the um, best ways of learning is knowing what question to ask, because that shows where you're weakest in your understanding. And those questions, if you're in a classroom setting, you can then feed those back in. You can ask you know, the, the tutor, you know, what does this mean? What happens if this? And you wanna get uh, very, um, fluent at being able to make those notes. You may be tempted to maybe just you know audio record the session or you know just download the lecture slides. The problem with that is you still have to do the work. So whether you do that and take it home and do the same thing or whether you do it in the classroom, you know, do what works for you, but you've still got to go through those notes. You've got to highlight them, you've got to pull them out. You can't just hear it and think that you'll understand it tomorrow or a week later. Um, chances are you'll have forgotten the nuance of what was said or even the facts of what was said. So, so that's really important. That's what I would do there is just focus on the fleeting notes as you're in the classroom setting. And then if you're studying uh, on your own or in a group where you've got more time, then again, you're creating these fleeting notes where you're taking the relevant parts of, of the text, pulling them out, um, but at some point you're going to want to create your literature notes and the difference between a fleeting note and a literature note is that you are taking the words of someone else, where that's the fleeting note of what they said, and then you're putting it in your own words and you're going to create lots of these notes. Try and keep them small, not big bodies of text. I like to think of them as atomic notes, one idea per note. Um, so you want to write it in your own words because that will test did you understand it. Because what you're doing is you're, you're essentially creating a reference for you to teach yourself in the future the same thing and try and get back to the same understanding. And if you can't do that, then it's your opportunity to go back to the source material, ask the tutors um, to get some clarification. But getting those literature notes is really quite important. And then the latter part is where you take those literature notes, you form them into your permanent notes. So now you're filtering and organizing and linking those notes to other things so that you can build this interconnected network, like a, um, uh, what do they call it? Connected thinking of those notes together so that you build up your understanding between the connections. Um, and uh, like if you're a biology you know, student, you may be learning about the functions of different or organs, but then you might also be learning about hormones and then the two could interrelate. And if you had one note or one set of material about the organs, the other is about hormones, it's really hard to build an understanding of how they're interconnected. Um, one of the things I've loved in my own sort of self-study is learning about the, the inner workings of the, the human cell or even just cells in general, what proteins do, what fats do, and that's really fascinating. And then I can start linking that to you know, things like 
what I'm eating and where the two link together. Really hard to do when you only look at them in isolation. So that's the power of the Zettelkasten method. But of course, if you're in an education setting, you're probably going to be tested through assignments and exams. And um, again, this is where you're going to rely on your note taking to really excel in that. So let's say you're doing an assignment. Now you want to reference, and if you're using a digital note taking system, it's really easy. You can link in the notes that are relevant to the assignment in question. And if you're trying to answer a specific question in mind or an insight, then you can pull in the ones that help support, help uh, contradict, like you build up the full argument and assessment of that. And then of course, when it comes to exams, you have to be able to essentially recall that information in an exam setting. And that's where space repetition can really help. And by having your notes as individual cards of single thoughts, you can then use uh, software. Uh, I think there's one called the Anki uh, piece of software, which allows you to recall or, or see those notes. And if you do recall it, then that gets pushed out further. But if you do struggle on particular areas, it will bring those back to you quicker. And the whole theory here, and this is where the science that I've read about has taught, is that you may know something on one day, but sleep, helps your, your brain filter out the noise for the signal, which strengthens your, your, your brain uh, memories of the things you've learned that are valid and sort of discards the things that are invalid. So getting good sleep is something you need to recall information. And then as you start re recalling that information, you, what you're doing is you're building up the strength of those neurons that are storing those memories so that over time they're easier to access. You're not struggling to recall them. They're just re ready to go. And that's what the space repetition can help with. So using your note-taking system, getting the fleeting notes from the in-class setting, create the literature notes, bring them into your permanent notes, and then use that as your study material. That is a winning formula for uh, your your education and you know doing it in a classroom setting <laughs>